People are always losing stuff. Sometimes it's our keys or our marbles. Other times it's our weapons or even our cities. We're a careless and forgetful lot, and we seem to have left a lot of our stuff in the various bodies of water of our world. From an entire mining town to a bunch of creepy skeletons, here are 20 bizarre discoveries found in drained water bodies. Number 20. Bombay Beach Town Bombay Beach in the Californian desert was once the place to be seen. This erstwhile vacation hotspot has, however, suffered a complete and total transformation since its heyday. Oh, and it really stinks. During the late 1950s and 60s, Bombay Beach, which is located along the Salton Sea, a big lake in the middle of the Sonoran Desert in California, was a popular vacation resort. It also sits at the lowest elevation of any place in the United States at 220 three feet below sea level. These days, it has all the charm of a post-apocalyptic wasteland. And during the 1970s, the environmental issues with this place began to show up. The sea had been massively polluted by runoff from nearby farmland, and the shore became littered with dead fish. Oh, and you know, dead fish laying out in the desert sun? That makes for one of the least welcoming fragrances known to nose kind. This was just the beginning of Bombay Beach's woes, though. The water levels were rising, and that meant flooding was becoming more common. And nothing about wading through a hotel lobby says, have a great vacation. In the end, the whole place was abandoned, as the 1980s would bring the draining of the waters, and much increased salinity managed to wreck the ecosystem beyond repair. The remaining businesses fled the area as tourism stopped, and Bombay Beach became a ghost town. In recent times, people have been creeping back in, mostly artists who are inspired by the extremes of the place, and curious visitors who seek out something different on their travels. It is still pretty smelly though. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Well, it seems that things may have become ever so slightly confused here at the Fancy Banana. I know, it is disappointing, but we're too human and we do make errors. This is supposedly an image of a drained riverbed that has got all the archaeologists completely stumped. You know, all the circular things and whatnot gave them quite a surprise, but we're also telling you that they drained this canal for the first time in decades and what they discovered is truly bizarre. And you and I both know that a river and a canal are not, in general, the same thing. A river is usually a naturally occurring flowing body of water. A canal is a man-made engineering project that uses waterways for transportation. But there we go. I don't know. Is it a river? Is it a canal? Is it a mystery at all? You tell me, because I want you to help. Go ahead and let me know all your ideas in the comment section down below using the hashtag FancyTopic. Number 19. Mormon Island Mormon Island was once a town that was founded in 1848 by members of the Mormon Battalion who were seeking their fortune, like many others, during the Gold Rush era in California. It was later flooded and then completely submerged, all but forgotten until very low water levels would reveal the remains of this once busy town. In 1853, the population of Mormon Island had been around 2,500 people. It had three dry goods stores five general stores, four hotels, and a lot of other smaller shops. The town would be destroyed by a devastating fire in 1856, and it never fully recovered. The population would dwindle as families moved out of the area, and by the 1940s there were only a handful of people left living there. Eventually, the last bits of the town were razed to the ground as the California government came along with the Folsom Dam project and intentions to flood the area. The cemetery was relocated to the dry side of the town, and and that's all that remains of this once thriving mining community.
The Folsom Dam was built in 1955, and this flooded the space completely. These days, though, with all the water problems in California becoming more acutely obvious, the foundations of Mormon Island have again been revealed as waters have receded due to drought. During the worst of the low water levels, it is possible to see the remains of many of the structures that made up the town, and also to see many old and rusty objects that were left behind when it became abandoned. Number 18. 1000 Lingus now, first of all, I should establish that this place is basically full of these things called lingers, or sometimes lingam, or even shivalingas, and probably a whole host of other names. They've got a whole bunch of different ones depending on who's actually talking about them and when they're being talked about, apparently. These are essentially abstract art pieces, sculptural works, that are said to be anionic representations of the Hindu god Shiva. So, the place is called Circe, and it sits in the middle of the Uttara Kannada in the Western Ghats in India. The river that runs through there is the Shalmala River, and along its banks in the area you can find these large rocks or boulders, many of which have carvings in them. These are the Shivalingas, by the way. The legend goes that there are 1,000 of them there, and there are indeed many. Some remain unfinished, others are extremely elaborate. There are apparently Shiva Lingers, sometimes two or more, on almost every rock at this place. and there is, naturally, a history to it all. The story goes that the king of Sonda had no children, so he was told by a priest to make 1,008 Shiva lingers and he would be blessed with children. So he apparently had all of these made. Did it work? Well, I honestly don't know, but I'm fairly certain that it's not the usual technique that you'd use when you're trying to make a baby. But what the heck do I know? Number 17. Fort McQuay. The McQuay Canyon in Utah is an extremely beautiful place, and it's no doubt giving you all the feels right now with its epic drone footage that you're probably enjoying. You lucky people. Where the heck would we be without the drone camera? I ask you this. Anyways, the extraordinary place is in Utah, a place that's so full of awesome looking landscapes and loads of cool rocks that it's often hard to choose which bit to talk about. However, today, because it's written in this script, I'm here at Lake Powell in the McQuay Canyon. There was, at one time, a large ancient population dwelling in the canyon, but many of the structures that exist here were flooded by the lake. Many more have gradually eroded over time and as the waters of the lake subside they reveal cake-like structures in the sides of the stone canyon and many spaces tucked into the landscape the canyon is formed from sandstone which is very beautiful and has all of those lovely colors within it but it's also soft and erodes away pretty easily that's why it forms these nice shapes and such like that we appreciate so much number 16 Canal St. Martin Every once in a while, it becomes necessary to drain the Canal St. Martin in Paris, and frankly, it is a disgusting and unenviable task, although it can also turn up some rather interesting objects. Canals are often pretty gross. In the center of major cities are the actual grossest. Even though the Canal St. Martin, which is probably pronounced with a French accent that I'm not about to try, is a place that people like to hang out. It can look kind of pretty, and has all the cafes and shiz that you would expect in a hip and young area of the city, but it's also full of so much trash and filth that it doesn't bear thinking about. Back in 2016, they decided to dredge the canal for the first time in over 15 years, and they found a whole bunch of stuff. Heaps upon heaps of wine bottles, this is France, you know, loads of old office chairs, old carpeting, bicycles, suitcases, all coated in the revolting thick brown sludge that covers the bottom of the canal. The canal is drained and cleaned about once every 10 to 15 years, and they do this by emptying 90,000 cubic meters of water into the nearby river. It takes three months to complete this filthy cleaning job and costs many millions of euros 
And at various points in history, the canal has been concealing as many as 56 vehicles at a time, numerous guns and ammunition, street signs, umbrellas, washing machines, and a whole bunch of the standard shopping trolleys that you would expect. The event draws curious bystanders to watch in amazement as the detritus of the city life is hauled from the famous hipster hangout. People are so very gross, aren't they? Why would you even throw your trash into the canal? That's just simply rude. Number 15. Network of Secret Rooms Blenheim Palace is a stately home in Oxfordshire in the UK and was built between 1705 and 1722 and has housed a whole range of posh people from that time onwards. That includes being the birthplace of Winston Churchill. All the way back in the 1760s, the gardens were redesigned by the highly fashionable landscape architect Capability Brown. He created lakes on the estate and this is apparently what caused a series of strange underground rooms inside of a bridge to be flooded with water. Recently, the bridge came under scrutiny when it needed some major restoration work, so the area was drained a bit and people discovered these mysterious rooms inside. Apparently, the bridge was found to contain 30 rooms and they were designed originally originally to be habitable, and so they contained fireplaces and chimneys, and there's also what they believe was built to be a theater. Those that uncovered the surprise space also found graffiti dating back from the 1760s and a whole load of sunken boats from the 1950s. It's not believed that the rooms were ever actually used. I mean, there were about a million other rooms inside that massive palace, and they probably just forgot that they even built this weird bridge building at all, and it's so easy to misplace 30 rooms, you know. Number 14. Town of Old Detroit this is the story of a Detroit lake in Oregon and some weird stuff that it revealed. Again, we're looking at a story that came about because of widespread drought, an increasing and extremely worrying problem that we should probably pay attention to before it's too late. This is Detroit Lake in Oregon, which suffered such a drought in the summer of 2019 that it pretty much dried up completely. That would reveal all kinds of history that had been concealed beneath its waters. The main find was a very old horse-drawn wagon that had evidently been in the lake for likely a century or more. The lake is usually a tourist hotspot in the height of the summer, with water sports and leisure activities all around its banks, but that year, however, nobody came. There was nothing for them to do, and that's just another side effect of the environmental crisis that's threatening so many parts of our planet right now. But a lake that's never dried up before should be a clanging warning bell to us all. Number 13. Lake of Skeletons and now for something completely gruesome. All the way back in 1942, a British guard made a discovery in Rupkund, India that freaked everyone out. There was a frozen lake that appeared to be stuffed full of skeletons. The ice was melting due to the summer conditions, and it had begun to reveal more and more bony remains that were floating in the waters and heaped all around the edge of the lake. As it was wartime, it was immediately assumed that these must be the bodies of enemy soldiers who had tried to sneak into India, but on further investigation, they found that these bodies were not fresh enough to be that. It seemed as though the bones were probably rather old indeed, although they couldn't determine how old, or for that matter, what it was that might have actually killed over 200 people in this valley. Then in 2004, an expedition to the site made a discovery. The bodies were dated to be from around 850 AD, and they all appeared to be from two distinct groups of people, a tribe or family, and a group of locals. The artifacts discovered alongside the skeletons revealed that they were a group that was being led through the valley by guides from the local area. They had all died in the same kind of way, by heavy blows to the head, by a rounded object from directly above. And that's when the plot thickened. Then they uncovered an ancient folk song from the region, which described a goddess that was made angry by outsiders damaging her mountains, and that she had flung enormous hailstones as hard as iron down upon them. It was concluded that these people had all been trapped in the valley when a terrible hailstorm came, and with hailstones as big as nine inches in circumference. They had nowhere to get shelter, and they simply died. How absolutely terrifying. Number 12. The First Submarine 
Back in 2001, a marine archaeologist named Jim Delgado learned about an old submarine that had been found on the shore of the uninhabited island of San Telmo, which is in Panama's Pearl Archipelago. Intrigued, he then went in for a poke around. What he discovered was not a World War II relic, as had been described, but rather it was something much, much older. The rusty old shell of a submarine seemed to be matching some design blueprints that dated all the way back to 1902. It seemed to have been designed by a German bloke called Julius Kohl, and the vessel was named Explorer. Although Delgado had never heard of the guy or the submarine, but it soon seemed as though this could actually be an important thing after all. There was some evidence that this submarine was the first ever successful sub to have been built, and that would make it all very important for all of the marine archaeologists out there, and therefore the find of a lifetime for this particular man. It's thrilling stuff, somewhere, I'm sure. Number 11. Manchester's Secret Canal Trap Door here we have a place that seems to become beloved by urban explorers who are in the habit of making YouTube videos of their exciting exploits, where this time we're in Manchester in the UK and poking about underground. There is an arrow carved into the stone of the quayside near Lock 89 in this canal in Manchester that marks the hidden location of a 200-year-old secret trap door. It's located close to the Hacienda Apartments on Whitworth Street in the city. The trap door is basically just a super simple plug at the bottom of the canal, and it was built in as part of the system when the canal was designed in the late 18th and early 19th centuries to serve as a plug hole to drain the section of the canal into the river culvert that sits about 20 feet down below. So the mystery was solved before it even became mysterious in the first place. It is still really rather interesting though, if you happen to like trap doors that is. Number 10. Tempe Town Lake is it actually surprising that if you drain a massive lake in the United States that you're going to find stuff at the bottom of it? Oh, and sorry to be crass here, but wouldn't you be more amazed if you didn't find an array of guns amongst all the stuff you discovered? There are more guns than people in America, and many of those guns end up in bodies of water one way or another. So when they drained Tempe Town Lake in Arizona, were they surprised, like they said on the news, to find several weapons in the water? Or that at least one of said weapons was stolen? Probably not. Or are the newsreaders simply forgetting that the rest of the time that they're reporting shootings and robberies and other such nefarious deeds that involve crimes and guns, the police, on the other hand, were in no way surprised at all. They had even sent a bunch of their own officers down there to poke around in the mud as the lake was drained, expecting to find exactly this sort of stuff. Number 9. Lake Nagadoches. Yet more drought conditions uncovered stuff that had remained concealed at the bottom of this lake for decades. Lake Nagadoches in East Texas had a particularly fierce drought back in 2011, which would reveal a bunch of stuff that had been submerged and therefore invisible for quite a long time. During this drought, NASA received a phone call from the Sheriff's Department down at the lake, where they believed that they had found something that NASA had an interest in recovering. And no, unfortunately, it was not a aliens, I know what you were hoping for. However, it was a bit of debris that they thought might have been the piece of the doomed space shuttle Columbia. They sent NASA a whole bunch of photographs, and they identified it and confirmed that it was indeed a cryogenic tank from that shuttle. Apparently, people ring up NASA all the time saying that they think they found a piece of Columbia, but they are rarely ever correct. They have presently recovered about 40% of the space shuttle to this day. Number 8. Long Yu Caves, China After a local pond would be drained in China, this network of ancient man-made underwater caves would be discovered. People had always believed the ponds of Long Yu to be bottomless, but that idea simply inspired one local man to go and find out just how bottomless they really were. So this nosy guy convinced his neighbors to go in with him and buy a water pump to begin emptying out their local pond. It does sound a bit crazy, and if that happened in most places, there would likely be a severely 
disgruntled neighborhood watch group who was wrestling the guilty parties away from their water pump, and at worst, they would probably find themselves arrested. But there we are. Things must be a whole lot different in Longview. So this guy completely drained one of the ponds, and that's when he discovered that, lo and behold, it wasn't bottomless at all. Shocker. It actually concealed the entrance to a super old man-made cave. This discovery was simply too tantalizing for other local people, and they all wanted to drain all of their ponds as well. There was a huge run on water pumps at the local hardware store, and everyone in Longview wiped themselves up into a pond draining frenzy. Never mind the fish or the other wildlife that may live in there, or indeed the fact that these ponds were used for many things within the community. Nobody knew what it meant, but they all appeared to have these weird caves. The origins of these things are still unknown, but they're now open to tourists, naturally. Number 7. Old Sword from a Lake in Sweden Yet again a drought had caused the exceptionally low level of the water in this lake, and weird old stuff had been found lurking at the bottom. This time around, we're in Sweden. That's why this business is called global warming, I guess. It does seem to be occurring everywhere. An eight-year-old girl was out paddling about in the waters of this lake when she found a pointy thing. She said that she, first of all, thought that it was just a stick and was about to throw it away, but then she realized it was something else and she called to her father that she had found a sword. Those are words that every parent is always thrilled to hear, I'm sure. The little girl handed the sword over to people who know about such things, and they reckon that it might be 1,500 years old, which is very, very old indeed. They're now busy poking around in the lake, looking for lots of other old stuff. Number 6. Centuries-old Nandi Statues Unearthed Near Masaru Although local people seem to have been aware of the massive heads of these Nandi statues that had been in their lake, they had never ventured in to investigate exactly what else might lay beneath the surface. Yes, the colossal cow heads had occasionally peeped out above the waterline when the lake was at lower levels during the drier parts of the year, but this time, the lake had completely dried up. Yes, on the account of an unprecedented drought, I know, this pattern is somewhat alarming, and the locals decided to take the opportunity to see just how big these Nandi statues actually are. It turns out that they're absolutely huge. The two Nandi face each other in the dried up lake bed, and they're carved from soft soapstone, believed to date back from the 16th or 17th century. Each one is carved from one single rock, but neither is complete. Some people believe that there may be an ancient temple down below the bottom of the lake, but others think that the statues were being carved at the site, probably to be transported elsewhere. It is all very mysterious indeed. Number 5. Drought Reveals a Lost Spanish Stonehenge Another country, another drought, another dried up lake. This time, we're in Cacaras in Spain at a drought-stricken lake that has revealed the slightly spooky side of what some are calling the Spanish Stonehenge. I mean, they are standing stones, but they're not quite as imposing or enormous as Stonehenge, but I see what they're trying to do. These megalithic stones are called the Dolmen of Guadalperal, and they're believed to date back to around about 5000 BC. They were originally discovered in 1923, but have only become visible four times in this usually expansive body of water since it was flooded in 1963. This part was a part of a program of modernization that gave not a hoot about the preservation of ancient monuments and sites of historical significance. Apparently, there are many more submerged treasures all across Spain in reservoirs and dams that were built during that time. These bodies of water were important in bringing water and electricity to places that had previously been left behind, but the cost came to the heritage of the region. Number 4. Hunger Stones Back in 1616, someone carved an inscription into a stone near the River Elba that reads, If you see this, weep. A rather less than jolly message, but behind it some serious information. These are the hunger stones of the Czech Republic, and there are dozens of them that have been shown in recent years by the increased droughts that have left the river at dangerously low levels. These stones basically warn that when they're visible, that means the river is too low, and that famine and failed harvests will follow, leaving the people hungry, hence the name Hunger Stones. Not the nicest message to receive from the old ancestors, but they certainly knew what they were talking about, so perhaps we should be all be paying more attention. Number 3. Ming Dynasty Bridge 
The droughts have hit China pretty hard in recent years. Poyong Lake, which is the largest freshwater lake in the entire country, has also been victim of widespread drying up, causing a great deal of concern for the water supply in the area. But just as we've seen over and over and over, when lakes dry up, they often reveal hidden histories. This time, the famous Ming Dynasty Bridge, known as a bridge that I can't pronounce, has been completely revealed. The granite bridge was built in 1631, and it measures over 9,000 feet long and is normally totally invisible on the account of being submerged in this massive lake. But these images show that the whole lake is completely dried up and the lake bed itself is cracked and hard. People have even been able to drive cars out across the area. Number 2. World War II Bomb the extreme droughts across Europe during the summer of 2022 managed to dry up many bodies of water across the continent and to place many others at their lowest recorded levels. One such body of water was the River Po in Italy. The River Po is one of Italy's major waterways. It is 400 miles long and is significant in the history and culture of the country, as well as the obvious essential life-giving properties that fresh water has. There have been chronic water shortages and failed harvests, all brought on by extreme lack of water that's caused in the region. Large sections of this major river have dried up completely, and in some places this revealed hidden objects that had been beneath the surface. This unexploded World War II bomb was found on the riverbed by fishermen near the village of Borgo Virgilio in Lombardia. The 3,000 local residents were evacuated while the bomb was carefully removed and a controlled explosion was then carried out. Number 1. Ancient Palace in Iraq how do you lose a whole entire city? Well, it turns out that it happens much more frequently than you might think, and usually they end up under several feet of water. This is the surprise discovery of a 3,400-year-old ancient city in Iraq. It had been submerged for decades when the reservoir that covered it reached record low levels due to drought. The waters of the reservoir receded so much that archaeologists were able to go into the site and begin uncovering and mapping out the entire place. They have been given new and valuable insights into the Mitanni Empire era that was dominant in Iraq during the Bronze Age. It's also given them more information to understand other archaeological sites nearby, like the 5,000-year-old site that was recently discovered at Harappan. And, I mean, it is nice to know all of this history and find all this cool old stuff that we thought we had lost, but staying alive, having water and food, and not dying to death in unbearable heat is probably a preferable situation to digging up lost old junk. Or am I just being short-sighted? Let's discuss the heck out of this entire thing in the comments section down below now, shall we? Thanks for coming with me on that journey poking about in the dried up bodies of water across our home planet. What do you think about all the junk that we keep at the bottom of lakes and canals? And were you amazed by any of this stuff? As always, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.